What's up guys? Welcome back. For those who are new, I am Rudy and you're watching the Gavada Garden channel. On this channel, you're going to find content specifically for the small scale gardener. We try and give the best advice from our own trial and error that we document on each video. In today's episode, we have season two, episode six of our multi-part outdoor grow series. If you found this video out of order, I will be linking the entire playlist right here as a pop-up and also as a link right down below in the description. But for now, let's start the video. And don't forget to hit the like button. So I came out to check my plants one afternoon and to my shock, I spotted some caterpillars. These small brown caterpillars look to be corn earworms. These worms usually come from the corn earworm moth. Now you can normally take care of these by spraying your plants with BT. However, we are in the fourth week of flower and I wasn't about to spray anything on them. So it's time to do some extensive hand picking. So because I found some caterpillars, I'm gonna be checking every single cola. I'll tend to start from the bottom and then work my way up. So I'll start on this branch here, work through the cola all the way down and then the next side branch on the other side and then so on and so forth and then I'll work my way up basically all the way to the top. That way you'll never lose where you left off and you'll eventually check every single cola. So normally what I do is spreading things out looking for those caterpillars and depending on the type of caterpillar you have they might be noticeable the ones i'm working with they're much easier to to see but yeah just spreading things out just like that a good identification if you have any on this particular cola is looking for basically caterpillar poop which depending on the size of the caterpillar you're you know looking for it can be really small tiny what looks to be dirt specks or they may be much larger obviously depending on the caterpillar and normally they're hanging out in between the stems and the colas oh look i got one here so just spreading things around i found a little cluster of poop and sure enough there's a caterpillar that's why i got these snips here i'm gonna pick it like if it's uh, some tweezers This process can definitely be time consuming, depending on how large and how many plants you have. Coming through an entire plant wouldn't be feasible if you were growing at scale like a larger farm would. But that's what differentiates small growers from mass production growers. Small growers can be detailed and take care of a problem without pesticides. Would you spray your plants to get rid of caterpillars if you were in week 4 of flower? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, would a larger grow be able to have a symbiotic relationship with wildlife? I find caterpillars and feed them to the lizards that roam around my garden. In return, they eat the pests that destroy my plants. Nature at its finest. About two weeks have passed and I checked the schedule and saw we were scheduled to get some rain. I too checked the calendar and our bubba was right around week 8 of flower. So I decided to harvest her before the rain. The breeder recommended a flowering time of about 8 to 10 weeks, and since it was about to rain, I decided to err on the side of caution. I wouldn't want her to develop butt rot, as she did have some tightly developed colas. Now I could have moved her indoors to shield her from the rain, but I ended up checking the trichomes and saw she had enough amber to my liking. When checking the trichomes, you want to check the trichomes that are on the bracts, also known as calyxes. Other parts of the plant can have trichomes, however, they may turn amber much faster than the rest of the plant. Checking the bracts will give you a better picture of the overall trichome development. Since this is a small harvest, I'm going to hang the entire plant in my grow tent to start the drying process. I'm going to let this sit in here with the fan pointed indirectly and let it dry. Next episode, I'm going to go in depth on the proper environment for drying. After the rainfall, I came out to the garden to dry off my plants using a leaf blower. In my zone, zone 9B, we can have hot and humid days followed by colder nights as I'm located somewhat near the mountain range. So if my plants stay soaked, that will definitely be a breeding ground for mold. Now don't go too hard with a leaf blower, you don't want to crack any stems. If you don't have a leaf blower, it still will be a good idea to come out and shake the plants so you get as much water droplets off as possible. 
Now this wasn't my fault. I went to hit the white truffle with the leaf blower and saw one of the branches had already been split. I could have taped it together and I'm pretty sure it would have healed on its own. But this is the same white truffle that has the weird growth pattern that isn't the same as my other white truffle. So I decided to give it the old judo chop. Judo chop. Another few days have gone by and I came out to see how the white truffle was healing up. Then I noticed the unthinkable, pollen sacs. This means the plant's a hermaphrodite, containing both male and female anatomy. Many say that you can cause a plant to become a hermaphrodite if exposed to high levels of stress. I thought, there's no way I stressed the plant out enough to make it herm, and in fact, I was correct. Since I grew two white truffles, I went over to the other, and sure enough, more pollen sacs. I wouldn't mind if the seeds ended up being fully male, but to be sending hermaphrodites means the seed bank where I got my seeds is, well let's just say, not reputable. Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. I'm hoping that my other plants that were next to the hermaphrodite didn't get pollinated. There really isn't a way to tell until closer to harvest, but I blame myself. I should have paid closer attention and caught the pollen sacs. I'm chucking this hermy into the compost and leaving the other to grow alone. For those who don't know, hermaphroditism is an undesirable trait in canna plants. When pollen from a male pollinates the stigma of a female, that will cause the plant to produce seeds. Now if you're growing canna specifically for breeding, then that would be the intended effect, to produce seeds. But for myself, I'm growing to produce buds, as having seeds in your buds would ultimately cause the smokeability of your harvest to diminish. You ever heard this lyric from Jay? Seeds in the ganja had it popping like the sample that I'm rhyming with. So if your ganja ever pops, you know there's seeds. And that concludes today's episode. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. If you have a question, whether that be about this video or even a question about your own growth, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll definitely reply to it. Now if you're not really that comfortable about leaving a comment, you can always email me and I'll be linking my address down below in the description. And if you want to stay up to date with this growth series, don't forget to hit the on-screen icon right below me to subscribe. Now for more content, you can click on any of the thumbnails to the side of me, one of which is going to be the playlist for the entire growth series. And as always, you won't get a harvest if you don't sow seeds.